Are you sometimes overwhelmed by the news and the moral dilemmas and changes in modern medicine that now confront us each day? Are there constructive things that you can do to help restore a culture of life? Find out next on this edition of Life Matters. Brian Johnston is the Western Director of the National Right to Life Committee. He has served in many capacities while advocating for innocent lives. As California Commissioner on Aging, as Chairman of the California Pro-Life Council, on the board of the National Legal Center for the Medically Dependent and Disabled. And now here's our host, Brian Johnston. Welcome back to Life Matters, where your program on the right to life, which is a very specific thing. Some people think it's about their feelings. Some people feel it's about their theology and what they believe. But the right to life is not that. It's a very specific statement. In the American founding documents, it's an assertion of a self-evident truth, a truth that was established at the establishment of this nation that the purpose of government, of a just government, is to protect the lives of those that cannot protect themselves. And for this reason, governments come into existence to protect lives. And so if it's going to be a just government, one of the self-evident truths is that human beings are not created by government, But in fact, it's the other way around. Government is a product of human creativity, and it has, in order to be an effectively just government, it has certain duties. And one of the first duties is to protect the lives of the governed. And you can see this in common sense. That's why policemen throughout history, there are those who have been empowered by the government to protect citizens. That's why policemen are given weapons and given authority to deal with miscreants, because human lives have been entrusted to that government. So for it to be a just government, it has to follow certain self-evident truths that inalienable rights have been given not by the government, according to America's founders, but by the Creator to every human life. And it is the job of the government to ensure those rights. So the right to life is a very specific thing. And if we let it be about our theology, well, I know a lot of pro-lifers, and they've got a lot of different theologies. It's going to get very confusing if this is about your theology. That's a big mistake. Please don't allow that to happen. Now, I respect your theology, and everybody has an idea. Everybody has a belief about how things really are. If we make this assertion of a legal right about our personal belief, well, then we're going to offend many other people. We have to make this about a self-evident truth, a demonstrable truth. And that's why facts really matter in this debate. We've got to point out objective facts that are incontrovertible. Science is on our side. The facts are on our side. And facts are terrible things to waste. Every human child is unique, and the cells of every child and every human being listening to me right now are declaring the uniqueness in their DNA. Your DNA is declaring that there's something unique about you, and it's important that this uniqueness, which again, America's founders recognized, human beings are special. That's really what they were saying, and that government comes into existence, if it's a just government, to protect human beings. So please remember these issues. It's very, very important because it's very easy for people to be pulled aside. Recently, in Washington, D.C., the United States Senate voted on a bill that would protect children born alive in the course of an abortion. And the reason they did that is that the state of New York passed a bill that authorized the killing of children born alive after an abortion. You're going to hear some of the media coverage. You're going to hear the response, not only of that media coverage, but the response of the governor of Virginia regarding that same measure in Virginia, where he suggested, well, once a child is born, it can be set aside. And after it's set aside, the doctor can influence and counsel the mother as to what they should do with that child. Now, that's known as infanticide. And it's very sad to see this. But it's the reality of where abortion advocates are at. Now, if you've listened to our program, you know we examine words and their meaning. And you know this, that abortion advocates, they aren't really committed to simply terminating pregnancies. Because 
I'm the product of a terminated pregnancy, and so are you. Birth ends pregnancy, but their goal is not to merely end a pregnancy. Their goal, and particularly if you read their books about choice and a woman's body, it is to not have a child. That goal of not having a child removes the burden of responsibility that a mother would have. The goal is, in fact, to end the child's life. And these recent bills have revealed that. So let's listen right now to some of the reportage regarding these important measures. And we're going to come back and talk about what it means for Californians. A defeat for a pro-life bill on the Senate floor. This bill was very specific. It only would protect infants who survived abortions at the end of the term by requiring health care officials to treat them with the same degree and skill and care that they would of any other baby. But it was short of the 60 votes needed to advance. This is about the most simple thing you can say, which is that a baby is a baby uh, and they have dignity and they have worth. And it's not because they're powerful, it's because they're babies. And so today is a sad day in the United States Senate, but I remain hopeful long term. I am asking Congress to pass legislation to prohibit the late-term abortion of children who can feel pain in a mother's womb. We want the government not to be involved in these types of decisions. We want the decision to be made by uh, the the mothers and their providers. And, And this is why, Julie, the legislators, most of whom are men, by the way, shouldn't be telling a woman what she should and shouldn't be doing with her body. I mean, this, the, the comments that the governor of Virginia said on the radio are about fourth trimester abortion. This is not abortion, this is infanticide. 320 million Americans are gonna have conversations around their kitchen table that are gonna be more loving and logical and in the long term, I think that this is gonna head in the right direction. No legislator, no political swing can ever jeopardize a woman's right to control her own body in this state. By empowering more doctors to provide abortions and removing all state restrictions on late-term procedures. Let us work together to build a culture that cherishes innocent life. The Senate will vote on advancing a straightforward piece of legislation to protect newborn babies. This legislation is simple. It would simply require that medical professionals give the same standard care and medical treatment to newborn babies who have survived an attempted abortion as any other newborn baby would receive in any other circumstance. What was the argument? What what do you think was the most common misunderstanding, as you would see it, in terms of the way they, uh, you, you know, decided to vote no? Yeah, well, I mean, most of the people who opposed the bill that spoke against it today claimed that it would end abortion, that it would it would stand between uh, a woman and her her doctor. And I am a very pro-life guy. That is true. I'm unapologetically pro-life. But that's not what this bill was actually about. This bill didn't touch anything having to do with abortion access or Roe v. Wade. It isn't about new restrictions on abortion. It isn't about changing the options available to women. It's just about recognizing that a newborn baby is a newborn baby, period. The pro-life, pro-life has gone from 38% in January to 47% now in their most most recent read. Do you think that number is, is accurate and why do you think that change might be happening? You know, I think the American people are having more interesting conversations around their dinner table than is happening in the United States Senate. Whatever the circumstances, If that medical professional comes face to face with a baby who's been born alive, they're looking at a human being with human rights, period. This should be far beyond Republican versus Democrat. This should be about having a heart. And if you see a baby, you think a baby deserves care. And we have an obligation to provide care for those helpless little babies. All right, you heard from Governor Cuomo as he gleefully signed the new bill on January 22nd, which legalized all late-term abortions, and struck down the law in the state of New York that had said you needed to care for a child that was born alive in the course of an abortion. This has now become what choice is, the choice to kill the child, even after it's born. You also heard Governor Northam of Virginia as he commented on this as part of a woman's right to choose. This is something that they're being very frank about. And if we fail to point it out, if we fail to strike at this moment, because this is a self-evident truth, 
your neighbor who may not agree with you on any of your theology. Joe Sixpack, Sally Soap Opera in Pomona, California. When they see late-term babies are being killed, when they see babies who are born during the course of an abortion, that they're going to be killed. Well, now you're not talking about theology. Now you're not talking about zygotes. Now you're talking about a very clearly evident, a manifest demonstration of a human life. This is a self-evident truth. We make our laws based on self-evident truths. When we come back, I want to tell you about the importance of these self-evident truths, about some existing laws in California, and how we want to shine the light of day what really goes on in California. Because you need to know that California is the abortion state. And unless you wake up to that, unless you're willing to talk about it, unless you're willing to bring up this subject as uncomfortable as it can be, the subject of late-term abortion and even post-term abortion that abortion advocates are pushing, If you don't bring it up, then no one else will. They'll be glad to hush it up. They'll be glad to avoid it. You can't let that happen if you really care about the vulnerable innocent. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to Life Matters. Life Matters is sponsored by the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of the National Right to Life Committee. To find out more on how you can help and be involved right where you are, go to californiaprolife.org. That's californiaprolife.org. We'll tell you how you can get involved in your local community, how you can be effective if you want to be a pro-life speaker. We have training programs and open doors of opportunity for you to speak on a life issue. If you'd like to donate your car or a boat, you can do that at californiaprolife.org. Car easy makes it easy and you find that on our website we get the most of any donation program car easy allows us to get the most out of your car maybe you're not getting the trade-in value you want it maybe it's just not running the way it used to let your car be used for life go to californiaprolife.org and find out what you can do to make a difference californiaprolife.org be sure to subscribe to the life matters podcast with brian johnston go to lifematters.life to subscribe and now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Well, welcome back. We're talking about late-term abortion. We've heard some of the news coverage. We want to remind you that you have got to point this fact out to your friends and neighbors, to the folks at church who want to avoid this whole debate. This is a self-evident demonstration that human beings are being thrown away in the name of choice. You have to seize this opportunity You have to prove that you're able to explain so that they can become free from the confusion in their mind. It's very clear if you're a Christian, you have a responsibility to help people understand, people who've been taken captive in their mind by wrong ideas. You've got to explain this to them, and this is the way to do it, to point out to them these living children that are wanted. By the way, the American Adoption Association points out that for every child that is adopted, every child that's put up for adoption in the United States, there are 36 couples waiting to adopt. Every child is a wanted child. That's a canard. That's a false assertion by Planned Parenthood that, oh, unless every child's wanted, we should kill kids. Every child is wanted. And the fact is, is that The dismissal of human life in abortion is a grievous, grievous assault against humanity. It's an assault against the right to life as a premise for your culture. And the cost to us is dear, not just to those lives. The cost to our culture is dear. You've become hardened if you ignore this. Don't let that happen, please. As we said, California is the abortion state, and it's the Alan Guckmacher Institute that follows abortion most closely. They're actually the education arm of Planned Parenthood. But even the Alan Guttmacher Institute has to guesstimate the numbers in California. Did you know that? That California is one of the few states now that does not report the details of the abortions that are performed. They have to be guesstimated. And according to the Alan Guttmacher Institute, which is the expert entity on this issue, they estimate that the highest number of abortions are done in California, and that the abortion rate is actually double the per capita rate of all other states. Why is that? Because here in California, your state government pays for it. But did you know, despite the fact 
that you're paying for it with your tax money, that the state of California no longer regulates abortion? That's right. Under the Jerry Brown administration, what few regulations remained were actually removed. And we know this, that under the Governor Newsom administration, that he doesn't want any kind of restrictions. He wants to expand it even further. Now, the Guttmacher Institute said in 2018 that there are no significant restrictions on California abortions. None. That's even late-term abortion. Now, I want to tell you something. That here in California in 1996, and it was thanks to Assemblyman Dean Andall and several others at that time, he's now retired, but I was around in 96, and we encouraged the passage of this bill. That was the Born Alive Infant Protection Act. And that is a state regulation. It's still on the books in the Health and Safety Code. And you can see more if you go to our website, californiaprolife.org. Go to the Light of Day Project. I want to tell you more about that. The Light of Day Project wants to shine a light on the practice of abortion in California because the radical Democrats who control California government do not want any accountability on abortion. There is no regulation, and there's no documentation of the numbers that are done or the number of late-term abortions that are done. The California state government refuses to investigate the abortion industry. And so here in California, even though like New York, we have had this measure that says if a child is born alive in the course of an abortion, you need to care for that child. That's on our books, but it's not being enforced. It's simply being ignored because there's no monitoring of late-term abortions in California. So how can you know if a child has been born alive? There's no one watching. The fox is watching the hen house. They get our state money for the abortion industry, and there's no accountability. And that's why we've launched the Light of Day Project. We've talked about this in the past. We have to file the FOIA. The Freedom of Information Act is actually a federal act. In California, it's the California Documentation of Information Act. And we have to find out how many abortions are done, particularly the late-term abortions, because they're refusing to monitor that. They had done it up to 2014, but now the state has stopped monitoring the numbers and types of abortion or the gestational age, or if there was a birth during that late-term abortion. So California state government refuses to investigate the abortion industry. We as California citizens have to. And we're asking you to join in because the light of day, you know, it says that sunlight is the best disinfectant. We have to get the truth out. Intellectually dishonest language, weasel words have been used to cover up what Roe is. You know that. You have friends and neighbors who say, oh, I know what Roe is. That just allows abortion during the first trimester. Wrong. Oh, it's only in cases of rape or incest or if the mother's life is in danger. That's wrong. There's a media, and thankfully now it's being revealed for what it is, what the president calls the fake news. They have intentionally distorted the abortion issue. They have intentionally covered up the loss of the right to life and what it means for our nation's laws and values. They have intentionally promoted abortion on demand. Abortion for any reason, at any time, for any reason or for no reason in particular, just for choice. That is the meaning of choice, that you just get to kill the child. You don't need a reason. Many people, even pro-life people, think that Roe versus Wade requires some reasons to kill the child. There is no reason necessary. It's just about choice. Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton have enshrined that in the law And unless you study, unless you intentionally dig in and get the real facts, you're going to be hoodwinked by the media coverage, which is intentionally misleading. It's critically important that the state of California hold accountable the abortion industry that you and I fund. It's critically important that the facts about abortion be made known. So the Light of Day Project is designed to find out what's really going on with the abortion industry, and in particular, the government-sponsored abortion industry here in California. So please go to the Light of Day Project. That's the Light of Day Project at the California Pro-Life website to find out more. We have attorneys that are filing papers even now to find out 
what, if any, documentation we can get out of the state. This must be addressed. You cannot be silent regarding late-term abortion. Again, why late-term? Because that's where your friends and neighbors are going to wake up. That's where they can't dismiss this as merely your religion. They can't dismiss this as, well, it's just protecting zygotes. No. No, we're talking about human babies, and there's no debate about that. In fact, effort must be made once the child is born to make sure the child is dead. We have a very good friend of our family, Melissa Oden, and her story is an amazing one. We've had her on Life Matters before. Melissa was herself born during the course of an abortion, and she was set aside gurgling as a living child in her own blood in a pail, in a bucket, in that abortuary, which was in a hospital. And thankfully, there was a nurse who could not handle that and intentionally defied the abortionist orders and rushed that child to the emergency room, which thankfully was nearby because this abortion was being done in a hospital. And Melissa Oden survived. And Melissa Oden was adopted, as I said, for every one child. That's put up for adoption. There's 36 couples waiting to adopt, longing to adopt. Melissa was adopted. She found out when she was 14 that she was the result of an abortion. Pretty stunning news. And you know, I got to tell you, talk about the impact on your psyche that your mother, that your parents wanted you dead. That's an incredible thing. Yet Melissa is a wonderful woman, a beautiful woman, a brilliant woman. She now has her own children. And the fact is, is that these issues are ignored. There are other people that I have met that have survived abortions. If the law does not allow their protection, then it's just covered up. As Long John Silver used to say, dead men tell no tales. You know, a lot of the deaths in Germany would have gone hidden. People knew it was happening. People knew that people were killed in those death camps. But until Ike Eisenhower said, you must look at what you've done, the German people didn't want to look at that. They could just pretend it was insignificant. And if it's insignificant, well, then who cares? But every life is significant. And here in California, this is happening. Late-term abortions are happening. They're not being monitored by the state. We're demanding the light of day. The light of day must be cast upon where our government funds are going. We must know about late-term abortions because we pay for them. There's no regulations in California. Guttmacher brags about it. Your governor, Newsom, who, by the way, is the fourth Catholic in a row to be governor of California, and all four of those Catholic governors were radically pro-abortion, I'm sad to say. So Governor Newsom does not care. In fact, he wants to be sure it's not talked about, it's only discussed as choice, and that there be no trammeling of the right to choose. That the right to choose is unlimited and the government will underwrite it. There's something wrong with this picture. We have to see what's going on. We insist that this be examined. We insist that the light of day be cast upon the issue of late-term abortion now in California. Please join us. Go to CaliforniaProLife.org, the Light of Day Project, to find out more. That's CaliforniaProLife.org. Life Matters continues after this. Well, hi. I just wanted to thank you for joining me. You know, I have good friends, children, young adults, and adults that have Down syndrome. And they are so loved. Their parents love them so much because they're the happiest people you'd ever want to know. I really love them. I'm going to tell you something, though, that's rather frightening. The government of France has now prohibited showing positive images of Down syndrome children and letting parents know how lovable they are. That's an actual law in France. Here in the U.S., 80-some-odd percent of Down syndrome kids are killed by abortion before they're born. In France, it's 96 percent. So we're not a whole lot better. If you'd like to help out, you can go to the National Down Syndrome Society, NDSS.org, to help out. That's NDSS.org. We really are in a battle of ideas, and lives really are at stake. And now back to more Life Matters with Brian Johnston. Let me sum up quickly to equip you to deal with the late-term abortion debate. Many people think 
Well, it's only going to be done if the mother's life is really in danger. That's not true at all. And Roe v. Wade and its companion decision, Doe v. Bolton, underscore that. This is not about the woman's life being in immediate danger. I'll read to you in a moment regarding that. But in point of fact, many people think, oh, there's something wrong with the kid, and therefore we can kill that kid. No, nowhere in either Roe or Doe does it recognize the child as having any rights. There need not be anything wrong with the child. And again, if that's the reason you feel like killing the child, fine. You can go ahead and throw away disabled children if it makes you feel better. But under Roe and Doe, there's no legal requirement for any kind of illness to be with the child. Let's talk about what it means by the health of the mother, because that's the language used in Doe. And Justice Blackman, who wrote both decisions, they both came down the same day with exactly the same votes, 7 to 2. Roe and Doe both opened up the abortion mentality we have today and overrode the laws of all 50 states. When it comes to the health of the mother, this is what Blackman wrote, that the medical judgment may be exercised in the light of all factors, physical, emotional, psychological, familial, and the woman's age, relevant to the well-being of the patient. All these factors may relate to health. Now, think about it for a moment. It isn't if the woman is immediately in danger. By the way, if a woman is in immediate danger of her life in a late-term situation, the quickest, the most effective way, and any honest OBG will tell you this, is a C-section. Save that woman's life immediately, and of course, save that child's life. So this idea that when the woman's life is in danger, that's not what the Supreme Court said. It talked about the emotional health, but let me underscore It all has to do with the medical judgment. So what we're talking about is the abortionist who is there to kill a baby. In their opinion, if they feel that maybe the well-being and even future well-being of this woman's at stake, that's called the health. And that can be done through all three trimesters. That's why abortion on demand is legalized in the U.S., yes, in California, and really in all 50 states. That the regulations now have got to come down to protecting that child or not. Roe and Doe said, no, you can't. That child has no rights. And don't buy into the life of the mother rhetoric. It's intentionally meant to get to your emotions. You need to equip people to understand why Roe v. Wade should be overturned and why we want to protect that child in the womb. Learn more about everything in today's show online at lifematters.life. Life Matters is a production of the California Pro-Life Council, the state affiliate of National Right to Life.